The Bible declares the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Therefore, we must create and declare a dwelling place for God's presence. Exodus chapter 33, beginning at verse 12. One day, Moses said to the Lord, You've been telling me, take these people up to the promised land, but you haven't told me whom you will send with me. You have told me I know you by name, and I look favorably on you. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your ways so that I might understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. And remember that this nation is your very own people. The Lord replied, I will personally go with you, Moses, and I will give you rest. Everything will be fine for you. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me? on me and your people, if you don't go with us. For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. The Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked for. I look favorably on you and I know you by name. Moses responded, then show me your glorious presence. The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will call you out by name, Yahweh, before you, for I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose, but you may not look directly at my face, for no one may see me and live. The Lord continued, look. Stand near me on this rock as my glorious presence pass by. I will hide you in the crevice of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand to let you see me from behind, but my face will not be seen. The 95th Psalms. Come. Let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him for he made it. His hands form the dry ground too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. The Lord says, don't harden your hearts as Israel did at Meribah as they did at Messiah in the wilderness. For there your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw everything I did. For 40 years, I was angry with them. And I said, they are a people whose hearts turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. The 100th Psalms. Shout with joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. 
Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. The 138th Psalm. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all of my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. As soon as I pray, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. Every king in all the earth will thank you, Lord, for all of them will hear your words. Yes, they will sing about the Lord's ways. For the glory of the Lord is very great. Though the Lord is great, he cares for the humble, but he keeps his distance from the proud. Though I'm surrounded by troubles, you will protect me from the anger of my enemies. You reach out your hand, and the power of your right hand saves me. The Lord will work out his plans for my life, for your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon me, for you made me. The 150th Psalm. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Praise him with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise him with the lyre and the harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and the flutes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 4 beginning at verse 21. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter where you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming, indeed it is here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way, for God is a spirit. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning at verse 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and the authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body 
and we all belong to each other. One of the 